Hey kids, welcome to Stylish Rumble Rigging Time Thing. Today we're going to be talking about that anti-alias problem. And I think a lot of you are like, oh, I know that problem. <laughs> because it's a known thing that kind of floats around in the harmony world. And the long and short of it is, when you have something that's being cut, so here's my eye. I just use the brush tool to create my outline and I fill it, drop it into my color art. This is real popular. And I'm going to use that to cut my pupil. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Beep. And we're going to give it a pivot point because we're not monsters. And now when I do this, my pupil's staying in my eyeball and feeling all good about myself. So because this is black on black, let me just get a color card. Beep. And yes, I have a color card saved down here that's like a mid-tone gray because I'm too lazy to make it two times. Oh, I'm so lazy. So because the whole eye is cutting this pupil, that's fine. This is working real good. But if we have a blue eye, then now we can see there is a black outline. And we don't want it to be above the outline anyway. So a lot of people will start with the auto patch. All right. So what an auto patch is, boop, I'll show you with the layer selectors. So an auto patch is basically if you had a line art and a color art, bloop, and this eye has a line art and a color art, you can say, I would like the color art, boop, to be cut, boop, by the line art, boop. And that's going to be pooped out the cord. So if I unplug everything like this, you can see I'm only getting color art and we can use that as a cutter. So that essentially is what this auto patch does. It's three, three nodes in one node. And people like that because it's fewer things and it makes it look nice and tidy. So bloop, and that goes over here. And then the pupil gets plugged in here. The problem is <laughs> the anti-aliasing problem. <laughs> That's not so great. And of course, because I'm just using the paintbrush tool, I could just use a color art module, bring in my layer selectors, kapow, and I just use a color art instead of an auto patch. We're gonna get the same problem. Not as much though, not as bad. It's working a little bit better. All right, you're still getting a little bit of fuzz, but it's working better already. So that's one solution. If you're using the brush tool, just use a color art. That's fine. Even if you're using the line art, so that's that's fine. If you're using the brush tool, use a color art instead of an auto patch and you're gonna get a better result. Now you're saying, Tracy, but we don't use brush tools. And I know some riggers who will fight me if I try and use the brush tool to draw characters. So let's just move this over. We'll create boop on a line art. So now we're using the pencil tool, which as you can see has a single stroke going through and then a thickness that's added to that stroke. So whatever way you move the stroke, it's going to affect the line and you can thicken up the line by widening how far away it comes from the stroke. So I'm going to give her some big old eyeliner here and I'm going to use just the same guy over here and we're going to take the color art and put it on the line. So here the problem with line art is that the line art is actually thicker than the color art, right? So if we just get rid of this, you can see that the color art's actually going all the way to the line, right? So that's when you're like, well, Tracy, that's why I used an auto patch. I just, I need to use an auto patch for that reason. So I put it in there, but then you get the anti-aliasing problem. It's not looking too bad on here, but it, it can look quite bad depending on the situation. So the better solution here is still to use a color art, believe it or not. I just deleted my color art. So I'm going to, you're saying, but Tracy, look though, look, it's bad, but what we can do is take the line art and we can put it above. And now you're going to get a perfect seam. Whoa, look, no gray fuzzies in there at all. So by just layering things like this, and you can just put the color art behind so you're not fattening things up, that's going to give you a nice crisp cutter, all right? So you've got your eye, your color art, which is the eye white is behind and cutting. And then the line art is just above the pupil, all right? So it's hiding that seam. If we remove this, we have the anti-aliasing problem. We're starting to get some little white pieces sticking out here. So we just hide it. So good layering is your number one defense 
against the anti-aliasing problem. That's the best way to go about it. Layer well. So if you still have the problem, let's pretend for some reason you live in an alternate dimension that where auto patch is the only thing that's available to you. I'm so sorry. Let's say that you're in this situation where maybe you've already come into a studio where they've used auto patches and they don't layer things and you've got, and this is what you're stuck with and you just got in revision fix your auto pat or fix your your anti-aliasing problem so how do you go about it well there are a number of ways one way is to just plug things in a lot all right so get a new composite make sure it's passed through so it's not going to muck up any of your z depth and then just plug it in again and again and again and again and again and again and again until it's fat enough to fill in the gap because you can see every time you plug it in if i just plug it in once anti-aliasing problem. If I plug it in one, two, three, four, five, six times, no problem. So I know some riggers who have this in a group. So they just have like anti-aliasing P problem, anti-aliasing problem group. And inside the group is just something plugged into a composite like nine times, nine times almost guaranteed to get rid of that problem. And they just keep it in their template library. I'm even going to add it in now. Right to modify, don't forget. Save it in, AAP. I know that's my anti-aliasing problem fixer, and I can just plug it in wherever. So maybe you wanna plug it in here, and that'll fix the problem, because it's fattening up like the auto patch, because remember, everything happens top, top to bottom. So first you have your eye, and then you're auto patching it, so you're getting your color art cut by your line art. Then you're fattening it up again. If you put this above, it might not work. Because here you're saying fatten it up a whole lot, then auto patch it. It doesn't like that at all. It's like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> right? So be aware of where you're plugging it in. But you either want to fatten up what you're patching with, or you want to fatten up what you have patched down here. That's going to clean it up. Cool. You could also... So that's the next way. First way I'd go about layering. Next way I go about is your anti-aliasing problem hysterical plug system. That's the next best way. The last way I go about it is the mat resize. And you're saying, but why, Tracy? That's exactly what it's for. Is it though? So the mat resize is simply going to make it bigger. So whatever the so like the actual shape is from the outside, it's just going to fatten that up. Just like plugging it in does, except you have this little slider bar. So it's, you know, 0.2. That's cleaned up the seam. And you're like, well, Tracy, this looks way better than this. Why do we not just use this all the time? Well, let me tell you why. <laughs> so... The problem with the mat resize, and I think it's gotten better in recent versions, but that might just be my optimism speaking. So say you're zooming in and out with your camera, the mat resize will scale poorly. So here's where your eye size is while you're working on stuff. And then you're zooming out, zooming out, boop, and you're zooming out, and you're zooming out, boop. And it grows like this because it's constrained to these numbers and it only goes to so many decimal points so it's rounding up to a certain number i'm not sure how many decimal points it has but you can see as it's going along it'll round down 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 it'll round up it'll round down 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 it'll round up and you grow like this so by just plugging things in a whole bunch of times this the actual eyeball is scaling appropriately like you'd think so you're getting your scale gradually growing and forgive my slightly wobbly circles here but you get it it's getting slightly larger as it goes along and this is going to just come along for the ride okay so matte resize you can get this sometimes if you have a scene where there's no camera moves, you can shove a mat resize in there. It's going to fix it up real nice. But if you have camera moves, it's better to just have this guy. And if you have it saved down here anyway, you can just grab as many as you need. You can duplicate boop, 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 as many as you need to solve this problem. So that's it. Those are my solutions for your auto patch problem. You're going to just rig well with good layers. Best solution. Next you're gonna just plug stuff in a whole lot. 
That's going to help you out. And then after that, you're going to rely on the mat resize, which is quite good as long as there's no camera moves. So that's it for today. Hopefully you're all learned and you're going to fix all your eyeballs. Because I see this in TV and I'm like, oh, you got that anti-aliasing problem. <laughs> So thanks for dropping by. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do, and I will see you next time.